This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Edwards all new FW190, Tacom's Merkava Mark I, Wingnut Wings Tauba, Tamiya's AMD35, and Hasegawa's latest Sea King. New product rundown, proudly brought to you by Hobbyco, distributors of fine model kits from Italy. Welcome to the new product rundown. I'm Elizabeth Nash, here with Aaron Skinner to show you some of the latest releases. I don't know about you, Aaron, but I feel pretty alive after the last show. Not me. If anything, I feel dead on my feet. But we've got kits to look at, so let me drink some coffee. And kick things into gear with Edward's new tool, 148 scale FW190. Ten years ago, the Czech company released a 190 with plenty of detail. It was a complex build that produced a good-looking model. Now, with a bunch of other kits under its belt, Edward returns to the subject. Let's see how this one, an A4, looks. The most obvious difference is the simplification of the part breakdown and detail out of the box. Here the fuselage halves extend all the way to the cowl ring rather than having posable cowl panels. Typical of modern Edward kits, fine recessed panel lines and rivets mark the surface. According to Edward's information, the shape of the rear fuselage on the new kit represents the latest information about FW190s. Also apparently different is the vertical tail, which was criticized on the original release. Reflecting the lack of open cowl panels, the new kit's engine is represented by the front cylinder bank molded on a bulkhead. Given the narrow cowl and the cooling fan, this should be perfect for a buttoned-up model. The cowl guns and exhausts are separate. The cockpit features plenty of detail, including a tub with details on the floor and turtle deck, control stick, optional plastic or PE pedals, and seat with separate cushion. Edward provides three options for both the instrument panel and side consoles. Using the former to demonstrate, there are plastic parts with molded dials, controls, and switches, smooth plastic parts that receive decal instruments and controls, and separate smooth panels to be detailed with pre-colored photo etch. The beautifully molded wings also differ from earlier kits. The wing root cannon covers are molded closed and no bay details are provided. The one-piece lower wing incorporates a large section of the belly. And there doesn't seem to be much in the way of shortcuts in the wheel well, which includes the main wing spar detailed recesses for the wheels, several frames, and the wing root cannon barrels. All of the control surfaces except the flaps are separate and should be posable with modification. Unused parts here and elsewhere hint at other kits to come. The landing gear legs have terrific detail and the wheels are separate from the tires. The pre-colored photo etch includes seat belts as well as the cockpit panels and controls. Optional parts provide open and closed canopies, the windshield, and gun sight. There are more unused parts here. Decals give stencils and markings for five Luftwaffe FW-190s, including two based in France, two on the Eastern Front, and one in Tunisia. It looks like this will easily build up into a good-looking replica of a buttoned-up fighter, but if you want extra detail, Edward's got you covered with a series of aftermarket sets, including photo-etched flaps. PE exterior details, including landing gear doors and shell ejection port details. A brass and replacement cockpit with PE details. Fuselage guns also from Brassen with the back of the engine and ammunition boxes. And a Brassen engine that provides all the detail absent from the kit including both cylinder banks and mounts. The set also includes the guns. Not shown here are wing root gun bays and a set of resin wheels, both from the Brassen brand. With this a la carte menu of details, you can build Edward's FW190 pretty much any way you choose. Israeli armor is perennially popular with modelers, and manufacturers have graced us with several kits of the more recent generations of the IDF's main battle tank, the Merkava. But it's been many years since a new first-generation Merkava hit workbenches. Now, Tacom's given modelers not one but two Mark I's. There's the straight Mark I with all of the features of the first 250 built. And the Mark I hybrid tank represented by this kit, which features upgrades implemented after the tanks first saw combat in Lebanon in 1982. The well-molded lower hull has seams, suspension attachment points, and hatches. Rather than torsion bars, the Merkava uses coil sprung bogies. The kit molds each pair of arms and springs together, and they mate with separate shock absorbers, return rollers, and external bogey sections. Jigs align the road wheel arms as the glue sets. They also serve as forms to construct the link and length tracks. The inner road wheels are single pieces, but four parts comprise the outer wheels, including the wheel, two-part tires, and a hub. The first road wheel on each side is different from the others with lightning hulls. Tacken produces each of those wheels as single parts. The idlers and drive sprockets feature multiple parts in terrific detail. 
Weld seams, vents, exhaust louvers, and toolboxes detail the upper hull. The rear of the hull has side panels and mud flaps. The Merkava's unique troop door can be posed open or closed. Two large stowage racks with cloth looking sides and top fit either side of the door. The distinctive scallop fender skirts are supplied in sections with separate brackets. The wedge-shaped turret has separate hatches and molded brackets and latches. The hatches have detail inside, but there's no interior for the turret. The turret's bustle basket comes in several pieces and includes characteristic ball and chain curtain molded with the panels. The gun barrel is molded in halves with a separate two-part muzzle. Clear periscopes, weapons optics, and lights are provided. Photo etched metal lines the bottom of the bustle basket and covers the stowage bins. Decals provide markings for two Merkavas shown in the diagram. Based on the parts, this looks like it should be a straightforward build of this important tank. Next, we have Wingnut Wings 132nd scale Staltaba. This graceful aircraft with its bird-like lines lives up to its name, which translates as Steel Dove. These pre-war designs equipped the German Air Force. Unarmed, the two-seat aircraft perform reconnaissance over the Western Front in the early days of World War I. The kit's cockpit includes a floor that doubles as the belly, bulkheads, fuselage framing, fuel tank, seats, and control wheel. Engine bearers up front support one of two power plants, either a Mercedes D1 or an Argus AS3. Both options include multi-part engine blocks, plumbing, ignition, and exhaust. The pilot and observer's positions, as well as the engine, are sandwiched by fuselage halves that feature raised and recessed surface details. The symmetrical vertical stabilizers and tail skid are molded with one half. Separate cowl panels and external radiators complete the nose. Thin trailing edges define ribs and raised bamboo lines on the wing warping areas detail the one-piece wings. The wedge-shaped horizontal stabilizer is a single thin piece. Two options are given for the open-spoked wheels. There's two-part plastic wheels with thin spokes and one-part wheels with photo-etched spokes and rims. There's a clear windscreen. Cartograph decals and detailed color diagrams provide markings for five Taubas. And there's a rigging diagram to get the warping system just right. Photo etch separators connect single lines into multiple lines. This is a unique airplane and Wingnut Wings has done it up nicely here. From Tamiya we have a 135th scale AMD 35 armored car. This is a reboxing of ICM's kit with a figure and diorama parts added. Armed with a 25mm main gun, the AMD-35 was deployed across French army units when Germany invaded in 1940. One of the highlights of the kit is the inclusion of an interior with a floor and walls. Exterior engine grills on the multi-part body are crisply molded and there's part of a fan in the engine bulkhead. Besides the engine with exhaust, intakes and some plumbing, the fighting compartment has front and rear driver's positions, ammunition cans, ready rounds and doors. The turret has separate front and rear panels, and the main gun is molded in halves with an open muzzle. The main body comes in three parts with fine rivets and leaf springs molded with the sides. Vinyl tires wrap two-part wheels. The tread looks good and no mold seam is visible. Tamiya's dark green sprue provides half of a commander figure with a choice of helmets. There's also stowage, wooden crates, and fuel drums. Decal supply markings for three vehicles, two in the French Army, and the other captured and remarked for German service. This is a good looking kit that fits very well with Tamiya's other French World War II subjects. Finally, let's look at a reissue from Hasegawa, a 148 scale Westland Sea King. This is the HAR-3 marked for the Falklands. To be clear, this doesn't indicate the 1982 Falklands War. The two aircraft included on the decal sheet served with RAF units in the islands, number 78 squadron in 1990 and number 1564 flight in 1983. The basic kit has been around for several years and includes fine recessed panel lines on the fuselage. The interior is limited to a fairly well appointed cockpit with instruments, seats, controls and walls. The remainder of the cabin detail is the floor. The tail and sponsons share surface details with the rest of the parts. The main rotor blades, which are drooped, can be posed folded or extended. The clear parts, including the one piece windshield, have finely molded frames. Resin parts detail the lumps and bumps on the fuselage. The Sea King is a remarkably large helicopter and the Hasegawa kit captures it well. Look for reviews of the Focke Wolf, Tauba, and Merkava in upcoming issues of Finescale Modeler Magazine. And you can see more new products in the December issue on sale now. Thanks for visiting Finescale.com. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm not sick. We'll see you next time.